So we're finally getting the update, the long-awaited update to the CSWIP 3.1 examination. Now, I made a video about a year ago saying, you know what, this, these changes are coming, and then they didn't. Uh, but the exam, the, the new way of working, has all been there in the background waiting for the rollout. Um, I think between COVID and, and a lot of other things, it, it, it got put on the back burner for a little bit. We received our emails last week saying, you know, from the 1st of June, these this new training exam structure is going forward. So I'll be teaching my first live version of this course from the 3rd of June. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, let's have a, have a quick sort of recap on where CSWIP 3.1 currently is. So right now, it's a... 30 question paper a multiple choice a 60 question multiple choice two macros a plate and a pipe um we've all <laughs> world according to james here my opinion only is those exams for a long time have needed scrapping and, and remaking uh back when i did my c 3.1 Oh God, nearly 20 years ago now, which is scary. Um, we didn't... When you did your practicals, you had to bring in your own acceptance criteria. So I used API 1104, but you could use uh, BS4515 and, and a few other ones. And it was very much a course of you have to use a full-on acceptance criteria from a standard, identify your defects, and, and, and move on. Um, the, the exam felt really stressful. It's still stressful now, don't get us wrong, but I feel it was, it was harder on the student back, back then. Um, and what it meant when we came to mark exams was that there was a lot of different versions of what things could be because if you were telling students, you know, use API 1104 or use BS 4515, there's going to be a different accept uh, reject criteria and, and all this type of thing. So it wasn't really good as CSWIP sort of took over the world and had thousands of exams coming in and, and needing to turn around things within their 21 days. So the exams were rewritten quite a few years ago now to become multiple choice uh, where they weren't before. That led, in, in my, again, my opinion on this, to the exams technically being dumbed down because instead of saying, he has a plate or he has a pipe, there's your acceptance criteria, knock yourself out, record it and reject or accept. The exams started guiding the students a lot more, saying, you know, there is this defect here, or it, for the macros, it literally points to the defect. Or in the um, plate and pipes, it would be, you know, with reference to excess weld metal, what do you have? Or with reference to arc strikes, what do you have? And it would remind you to kind of go, oh, I haven't looked for arc strikes, quick, have a look, have I got any? Um, Dumbing down might be too strong of a word. It probably is too strong of a word. Uh, but it definitely, I don't feel, has been the intent of trying to find uh, students and exam pass marks which really represent what those people are doing uh, day to day. So with, and, and we didn't, haven't at all asked questions really around well calls and well procedures, which... It's a big part of being a CSWIP 3.1, um, checking welder qualifications off against uh, production work or checking work against the WPS. Those have never really been in the training modules at all, um, even back in, in the day when I did it. So how, how does the system change and, and move that forward? Well, the first one, I guess is to scrap those like that exam structure and come up with the one we're moving to on the 1st of June, which is to condense some of the exams in, into one and then add added additional. So we'll be moving to three new exams. 
That is an 80 question paper, a 40 question theory paper around WPSs and PQRs, uh, which is in a workbook type format, and then 24 questions around some segments of a, um, a, a plate, really. Um, and changing the way we're, we're asking people to, to find defects and report them as well. So there's going to be less direct, here is a defect, what is it, to here's a bit of plate, you find the defects and tell us what it is. One of the interesting changes, and I'm using the word interesting because I haven't really got a better word for it, is the introduction of negative marking. So when you get something wrong, you will lose marks as well as getting marks given to you for getting something right. Um, that is really going to have the effect of stopping people just guessing. Because if you guess a defect and it's not right, you'll lose a mark. And you still need your 70% to pass. So it's more, in some ways, it might be more likely that you fail by just trying to guess your way through, through the exam paper. Um, what it'll also do in the multi-choices is remove the all of the above answers, which we all know if we see all of the above in the answer, more than likely it's going to be that one because that's when you want to give a multi-answer question but you can only have one answer. In the multiple choices moving forward, there will be one um, one answer, one question with multiple answers. So it could be A, it could be A and B, it could be A, B, C, or A, B, C, and D. Um, if you overguess, let's say there's only one answer, but you put two, you'll get zero marks because you'll gain the mark for the right answer, then you'll lose it for the wrong answer. Um, and so on. So that's, that's going to be an interesting thing. Uh, if you've ever done any of the IWE courses, the, the Weldon Engineering, that's how that exam's been for, for a while. Um, but it, it's going to add an interesting dynamic for uh, all of those questions which are currently online. And you, you see lots of them around. I cover a lot of them on this channel. We go through them. That's going to change, okay? So multi-answer questions are now within those 80 multiple choice questions. Um, one of the other big changes with the multiple choice is that there will be two parts to each question. So we will start with question one. I don't know. It'll say something like, um, which of these defects is like or can occur after 48 hours or 72 hours. And then you look down and go, okay, hydrogen just cold cracking. Great. Question 1A will then say, what is the driver for this defect? So if you've kicked hydrogen juice cold cracking, you'll look, I don't know, for one of the three, four sort of things, saying hydrogen, stress over half the yield, uh, a susceptible microstructure like mountain site in a temperature under 300 degrees. But if you got question one incorrect, I don't you put laminar tearing, then the reason for that will be you know non-metallic sulfates. So it's going to be more punishing uh, if you get the first step wrong because potentially you lose two marks rather or you know, a bunch more marks instead of just the, the one question. But it will also allow the system to interrogate if you understand the answer to the question and the reason for the answer to the question. Uh, so that's that's going to be a, a weird one to try and teach, I think, as, as we go through. Because I mean, I've always tried to, to teach the chain of events, not just the question to the answer. Some people just want one question, one answer, move on. Uh, well, you're going to have to learn the pattern and in, in the picture as a whole, which is, is not a bad thing. Um, the next one is your workbook, so your WPQRs. What we're going to get is questions around uh, references to 
WPSs and welder qualifications. And they will ask things like, um, with reference to WPS1, what is your uh, acceptable range for welding material thickness? Or you have measured a preheat value of 80 degrees. Is this acceptable to WPS4? And it's what it's going to be asking is, can you assess data from the written documents and make a decision from there? Which is, is going to be good. From um, how I'm thinking I'll be teaching it, uh, it'll tie quite nicely actually into the AE choice questions because we'll be able to pull that knowledge all the way through, not just from multiple choice questions, but into real documents. So, so that's great. Um, the next one is your practical. So instead of doing a plate and a pipe uh, and a macro, the macro's been cut, that disappears. And now we will be moving to segments. So these, I've made some samples up to do some teaching with. These are these aren't this the C Swip samples. These are these are my own. I'm, I'm I'm busy playing with to do some some other training with. I think these are these are a good idea. Uh, but you can see we get like a, a key ring with a load of samples on them. Uh, and now instead of having a full plate, you'll have a variety of different segments. So the question can go, you know, segment four. Okay, one, two, three, four. So here's segment four how what defects have you got on segment four and you'll have a list of defects and you're going to go okay i've got some mechanical damage i've got an arc strike i've got some undercut um and tick them off and then can you accept and reject to the new acceptance criteria and the new acceptance criteria comes in two parts it is uh really sort of mirroring the output of ISO 5817. So you is it okay to level one or level two? And then you can you, you answer it and you look at the, the TBY acceptance criteria and go, right, the arc strike according to level one would be a reject, but maybe in level two it would be an accept. So you'll have three lines of uh, ways of answering. Um, I'll drop something up on the screen here hopefully to to try and show this um but what it's really this is getting to is can you see a defect without it being pointed out to you can you correctly identify the defects just from a list uh quite a long list instead of a really short one and then can you use an acceptance criteria which has multiple levels on it to make the right decision uh, very much in line with 5817, which is a very well-used standard. Um, yeah, so so three bits. Uh, and that, of course, gets rid of there needing to be a plate and a, a pipe. So that just comes in, into the one. So that leaves us with three exams. Um, what we're going to be doing over the next couple of weeks as I'll be generating some more videos to do training around these types of questions in more detail and during the week of the 3rd of June, I'll be teaching this course for the first time live. You know, like, this is a brand new thing. Off we go with with real students. And I think what I'll do is I'll do some sort of, you know, like a diary type of shorts or something like that to kind of go, okay, day one, this is how I found teaching it. This is what I'm, I'm sort of seeing my students are, or maybe questioning struggling not quite sure about to try and give you the most amount of information as quickly as possible uh but if you haven't seen already there's a, a thing this side going on every sort of 30 seconds a minute something like that saying like and subscribe a lot of people watch these videos a lot and don't subscribe come on hit it just just hit it help us we passed a thousand subscribers which is crazy and I'm, I'm very grateful it's nice to know that people like the content but right now if everybody who watched the video subscribed we'd be up at like nearly three thousand subscribers so come on let's 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 get that going what 
I want to use that this for this platform for is just to get the most the best information for these courses out is is I can from someone who's taught it for nearly you know fifteen to eighteen years it's it feels way too, way too long to have been teaching that but you know come on let's go along for the road journey ask questions please get the algorithm likes it when people write things in the in the comments so write something like it subscribe. Ask your question. I will try to respond to as many as I can.